Valens Research, Uniform Financial Analytics. So what you see here is the Valens Research app. This is how our clients, as I said, get our uniform accounting data. Right? As we've jumped into here, we have the company-specific analysis. We also do macroeconomic analysis. Right? When we're doing these uniform accounting adjustments for 32,000 companies globally, part of the power of having uniformity in our financial statements is that we can actually aggregate those financial statements and get real insights. You try to aggregate as reported data for the U.S. or for any – group of companies, you're going to get a garbage in garbage out phenomenon because of the incomparability of the financial statements. We don't have that issue. And so we're able to do macroeconomic analysis to be able to understand where are we in the market cycles. And based on where we are in the market cycles, we can also be able to understand what kind of stock should people be picking. We also have educational materials that we give our clients in terms of the Institute of Strategy and Valuation, and we have newsletters that we produce. Um, newsletters that are specifically focused on um, both the equity and credit markets, um, where we actually highlight either top ideas that we have, interesting insights we had that month um, or that week, and also uniform accounting distortions and interesting credit ideas. But so to take you into why you dialed in, right? you dialed into this call because you wanted to see uniform accounting at work. The first company that we highlighted as a name that we wanted to show was CVS. CVS is really interesting because along with being a highlight today, it's a name that's on our conviction long idea list. And so I'll walk you through why we actually think it's a really interesting idea after I walk you through what you're looking at with this chart here and also helping you understand why it is that this is such a powerful insight and why as reported accounting metrics wouldn't let you see how interesting of a company CVS is. So what you're looking at here is our performance and valuation prime chart, as we call it, or the PVP. We call it in the performance and valuation prime because it first shows you performance, right? What's the company's returns, what we call ROA prime, return on assets prime or adjusted, it, and it's growth, asset growth, right? How much the company's investing in the business, that's performance. And then we talk about valuations in terms of valued asset prime ratio, in terms of PE, our adjusted PE. This is an adjusted price to book metric and this is an adjusted price to earnings metric. The orange bars that you see here on each of these panels, that is the distorted as reported metric, right? So the distorted as reported ROA, the distorted as reported P, um, asset growth, price to book, and also PE. The blue bars, historically, are showing you what this company's real performance was, what its real asset growth was in valuations when we make our uniform accounting adjustments, right? So when you look at here, what you can see is, hey, what happened in 2007 for CVS? They acquired Caremark. Caremark is a massively different business from CVS's core business. CVS's core business is obviously retail pharmacy. Caremark is a PBM. What Kmark specifically does is they distribute drugs, right? They basically negotiate dr to buy drugs and then distribute drugs, generally drugs that are, um, you know, longer term subscribed, uh, prescribed to people because of the fact that they have, you know, something that they have to take constantly. But it is a much higher ROA business than CVS is. You wouldn't know that, though, if you were looking at the orange bars for CVS. You would have thought, oh, they acquired Caremark and basically the business continued to be what it was. No, it didn't. That Caremark transformed CVS. Um, also, you would see in the blue bars, right, that you had a big dip in ROA right here in 20, 2018, where as reported ROA fell from 6% to 4%. And you'd say, oh, when CVS acquired Aetna, they clearly destroyed value in the business. When in actuality, that's not the case at all. Aetna was a similar ROA business to what the legacy business was, but their acquisition of Aetna actually unlocked some really interesting things for CVS. The two light blue bars here, those two light bulb blue bars are what sell side analyst forecasts are for CVS when we push them through the uniform accounting matrix. So what we're seeing is CVS, which had a 20% ROA, uniform ROA in 2018, sell side analysts, when we take their forecast for things like revenue, net income, and CapEx, are forecasting it to be around 19% in 2019 and 20, back to 20% 20 in 2020. The last thing is these white bars these white bars are what the market is pricing in right now. So at a $75 stock price for CVS, the market is pricing in CVS to see ROA fall from 20% in 2020 down to 17.5%. So the question that we have as investors when we look at this chart is, do we think market expectations, these white bars, 
are too high or too low based on the historic fundamentals of the company, based on their forecasted fundamentals, and also based on what we know about the fundamentals of the business and our thesis for the company. Same thing for asset growth, same thing for the value asset prime, and same thing for VE, right? Adjusted PE. What's really interesting to us for CVS and why CVS is on our conviction long idealist, even though, for instance, it's not trading at a 10 times PE, it's trading at a 19 times PE. The reason why CVS is so interesting is because of this chart. And because CVS reminds us a lot of another company, which I'll take you to, which is United Healthcare. So what United Healthcare did, and see, this is the real power when we start to use the Uniform Accounting Database, is you can start to look at companies versus peers. You can start to understand how different strategies have impacted different businesses and how it might impact the business that you actually are looking at. You know, we often talk to people about the idea of a company doing an Adobe, meaning they're shifting from a software buying business to a software subscription business, and how that impacted Adobe and how you can model that for other companies. Well, similarly, United Healthcare is a great proxy for understanding what CVS could do over the next five years. Back in 2011, United Healthcare looked out and said, oh no, we're too big. Basically, what had happened was all of the insurance regulators nationally, right, because there's state insurance regulators in each state, basically said, United Healthcare, you're too big. We will not let you take on new lives in terms of insure new people by acquiring other businesses. You've gotten as big as we'll let you get. And so what happened was then they had to ask the question, okay, if that's the case, how can we grow? Because unless we want to get fired, we can't go to our shareholders and go, sorry, we're not allowed to grow anymore. And so what they did is they said, wait a second, we are the largest HMO, the largest healthcare provider in America. We have phenomenal data. We have the best data on American healthcare anyone does. We have better data than CMS does or anyone else. What we can do is we can figure out how to use that data to create new businesses. And they did, they created Optum. And what Optum was, and really the three core parts of Optum are one, Optum combined with what's called, um, uh, was formerly called Catamaran, which is their PBM. Optum basically said, we can optimize to figure out what are the right drugs that we should be buying based on what kind of treatments are working and what kind of treatments are in demand based on the flow that we're seeing in volumes from our, um, in the hospitals and, and in caregiving in general, we're gonna get better negotiation, negotiated prices and we're gonna better figure out what products to source and not to source. That immediately helped boost the ROA because it's helped drive down costs in their core business, the HMO business. The second thing they said is, hey, based on the fact that we have this data on how, how performance is, what the, best, what the best treatments are and everything else in terms of, um, you know, from our healthcare records, we can partner with hospitals, start ACOs, take ownership in hospitals, take ownership in different care things like how they just recently bought in the last two years, DaVita's business, part of DaVita's business. And what we can do is we can better run those because of the data that we have on what are optimal best in practice things to do. And we can also drive down lower costs and higher profitability in those businesses and also improve the profits of our business. And the last thing they said is, wait, we can also partner with pharmacy, with pharmaceutical companies and medical device companies and say, hey, here are the places where we need better treatments based on the outcomes that we're seeing from our patients. We will help you, we will give you the data to help you understand what you should target and we'll work with you on that. And so through all of those data-driven, big data investments that they made, they were able to take a business that was a 25% ROA business to a 45% ROA business, and actually up to 50 by 2020 likely. And that's what we're looking at with CVS that's so interesting. CVS already has the PBM, right, that, um, that United Healthcare built. They already have other data, and now because they acquired Aetna, they have the healthcare data that United Healthcare has. But the interesting thing with CVS is CVS actually has better data than United Healthcare does. Why? Thanks to the extra care card. CVS understands something that, um, that United Healthcare doesn't. It doesn't. It's not that they don't understand, they don't have the data on. CVS can see a window into the rest of your life, not just what pharmaceuticals you're buying and how you're being treated in the hospital, but also are you, when you go to pick up your insulin, are you also buying a candy bar, which is what you should not be doing if you're a diabetic, and can understand how those, basically those outcomes 
are actually driving the healthcare of a business. So if we just model, right, the reason why we think CVS is so interesting is if we just model CVS to say, okay, what could happen if CVS basically becomes United Healthcare? If CVS unlocks the value of their business and creates a healthcare tech business, data business, just like United Healthcare did, which by the way is what they're specifically saying they're doing. And what we see is this company, if that's the case, is worth $280 a share, not 75, 200 to three, 250% to 300% upside. We can only see that though, because of the fact that we can understand what United Healthcare's real performance was, right? We can see United Healthcare isn't actually a 7% ROA business, it's a 50% ROA business. And we can also see that CVS looks a lot like it and also didn't have declining returns last year from their Aetna investment. They actually have improving returns. Balance Research, the world's leading source for uniform financial analytics.